And welcome back to You Rejoin at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Virginia that I think that you should know. And today we're not going to be talking about a logical fallacy. Uh, of all things, uh, that's most of the list, but uh, this is an example of something that I learned that is not, in fact, a logical fallacy. And so what it is, is multiple choice tests and surrounding the, the, the you're, you're, you're in, in class doing a midterm or a final exam, you're faced with one of these kind of choice tests. Uh, in Back when I used to do them, they were kind of a Scantron, a, a paper card that the students would be given with all sorts of these little full or round circles drawn on it, and you would color in one of the options for any of the particular answers of a particular question. And so, chances are, if you're a student, these, these aren't really going away anytime soon. They may do them on computers these days, but, uh, you know, you're, you're, there are multiple choices are a fact of life, and, and you're going to do a lot of them. And even something as simple as voting, realistically, is a multiple choice test of some kind or other. So in or out of school, you're going to be faced with choices, and you're going to be, some of these choices are going to be through these interfaces that you're going to have to deal with, and you're going to have to be faced with at some point. And so what you should be doing, and, and the entire thrust of this video is, is that if you're faced with one of these multiple choice questions, make sure you color in the correct space for the answer that you actually want to choose on that test or on that piece of paper. Or if it's a computer, make sure that the answer that you select is in fact the answer that you actually want to choose. And you may be stressed. You may have been up all night. You may have even uh, just kind of skimmed through the, the answer uh, area of the screen, or uh, you, you may be kind of skimming through the, the, the multiple choice paper that you're kind of faced with, and you're tempted to just not go back and double check. I implore you, go back and double check. Make sure that everything is filled in, and that if you've got uh, multiple choices and one of the answers has to be right, that you've got an answer, even if you don't know what it is. Make it a habit. Uh, e even on tests that you're confident about, and you're, you're you know, well, you, you know that you've got the test under your control, uh, go back after you've done the test and make sure that your answers line up to the answers that you actually want to pick, if, of course, you have the time. Because once you make it a habit, in situations where you don't necessarily have the time, and you're not necessarily uh, as close to 100% as perhaps in that those particular cases, you'll, you'll be one step closer to doing it by habit, to checking to make sure that you're in the right spot for your particular question by habit. There, there's a friend of mine here in Thunder Bay who apparently took, I think it was his high school uh, GED kind of equivalent test uh, on these multiple choice scantrons and ended up being kind of one column to the left uh, or, or one question down from where he should have been answering for a couple of questions. It wasn't the whole test, but it was enough to make it so that instead of having an obscenely good mark, he just had a pretty damn good mark. These are the sorts of problems that kind of creep in when you do these tests, that just take your grade from what it should be and shifts it either, you know, to low, chances are lower, uh, sometimes a little bit higher, but most of the time you'll find that it lowers your grade beyond what you should be getting. And so doors will close on you. You'll, you'll experience the problems that I spoke about in my grades video. I, I encourage you to go watch that. But uh, it, 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 it's unnecessary. It sucks and it's something that's avoidable. If you just have the time, if you go back and put the effort into making sure that you're not making this mistake. So what's another example of this, uh, where this is kind of used? Uh, when I went to high school, there was a uh, thing around Valentine's Day, at least once uh, every couple of years, uh, where all the students were given kind of like a, a dating form to, to fill out things about themselves so that they could be matched with other students. Of course, part of that was probably just to get us to focus on each other rather than causing problems for the teachers. But even in that case, uh, if you don't fill out that correctly, you can't get a, a match out of it uh, that you might have otherwise been able to get. So again, it's just this isn't just purely a, a thing that you're going to be dealing with on exams 
in an academic context, but it's going to be something where multiple choice uh, problems uh, are, or are, are given to you in a much more general sense. It should also be pointed out that this isn't necessarily just true about paper. And as I kind of alluded to earlier, eventually we're going to move all of these kinds of tests to a computer system of some kind or other. And this is going to continue to plague us uh, because not all computer systems have a well-designed user interface. And so if you're designing a user interface, you should be wary that your users may end up making this kind of mistake. You should put some effort and thought into helping them not make this mistake because people making this mistake doesn't really benefit anyone. It's an example of a poor user interface along these lines. Uh, I remember, and it's in the book Gift of Fire, you can kind of look this up. Uh, I think it's Sarah Bass is the author of that. Uh, but there was an airport, and I think it was about the 70s, uh, where they, they ordered this multi-million dollar computer system. It was top of the line, state of the art. Uh, and it worked very well if nobody made a typo uh, when making choices between options. Because if somebody did make a typo in choices between options, the entire airport computer system would crash. No planes could land, nobody was able to get anything done, and it became kind of an emergency situation that needed direct developer support to unscrew up. And so that's an extreme case of probably the most extreme case of a user interface problem. But this is just another kind of more down-to-earth level where you're, you're faced with this choice and you want to make a choice, you want to choose the option that you choose, and then you try to make that choice and you end up choosing the option you did not want to choose. And so respect the user's choice. Make sure that the systems you use, to the extent you're capable of doing so, respect your choice. Uh, and please, just go back and double-check your work when filling out multiple choice tests. Don't save yourself a lot of hassle. Uh, I had to learn this the hard way. Uh, don't you know, learn from me and don't necessarily uh, make this mistake in your life. If you have any questions or would like to present uh, examples of multiple choice questions, um, feel free to post them in any thread where this video is posted. And uh, as usual, there should be a little Bitcoin address at the bottom somewhere to donate in case you like this video and would like to help us uh, acquire uh, writing material for this beautiful whiteboard. And uh, as usual, we will see you next video.